Okay, today we'll be making some sauerkraut with this late Dutch cabbage that we you may or may not have seen that vlog that we harvested. All right, guys, today we're going to be out here showing you a few clips of the stuff we're harvesting right now, uh, end of August, in the garden. Uh, we do need some, some weeding and stuff we got to do, so we're just going to basically... Uh, we're going to take you in, show you how we make sauerkraut and how we've been making sauerkraut. And then at the end, there'll be a few clips of all the stuff we're harvesting. So make sure you stick around to the end if you want to see what we're harvesting right now. But before we get into that, we're going to measure this uh, one of our tallest sunflowers and just see exactly how tall it is. So we got it on the ground. Let's see if we can get this all the way up. Higher, a little bit higher. Hundred and twenty four inches, and it is on a slant. So that's ten foot four. And I'm not sure if that's the tallest one. I think it is. But it looks like it from I think it is. distance. All right, let's go make some sauerkraut. Want to? Okay, today we'll be making some sauerkraut with this late Dutch cabbage that we you may or may not have seen that vlog that we harvested. We did get five heads. Well, four and a half. One was fairly rotten. We are going to pull some of these leaves off. But these are the things you're going to need. You're going to need some way to cut it. We're using this old kraut cutter. You need something. Your cabbage of some sort. You're going to need a crock. And these come in various sizes. Um, we're using a two-gallon crock. We've made this kraut in as big as uh, 10 gallon crocks. Uh, this does take six weeks to ferment into sauerkraut. You do have to take some, um, I say mold, but some buildup that comes on top, floats on top. You'll scrape that off. Our neighbor uh, down the road, he been making sauerkraut his whole life and he, he's probably in his 80s you see him out every day riding his bike walking uh he lives about a mile from his garden and every day he rides or walks to his garden works all day in his garden and rides back home uh, and sometimes all over town so um, but he when he makes his sauerkraut he leaves it in the crock and just takes it out of there now sometimes we've taken this out after the six weeks and canned it but you can leave it in the kraut as long as you keep it submerged in its own juices. Now, other than a crock, you'll need some sort of a weight. We use this uh, quartz stone that we found. And we have um, cleaned this, sanitized it. And then we use a plate that fits perfectly down inside here. Like this. And this will hold the sauerkraut in its own juices. And I'm going to show you how to make its own juices right now. So stick around. Okay, so I had to take off four or five outer leaves. Uh, just because they had some discoloration. And we're going to take out this stem. And then we're going to cut this in half. Maybe quarters. Something easier to work with. Now you can cut this all with a knife, uh, and there are ways you can make this in canning jars if you don't have a crock. But you can find crocks at a lot of different um, garage sales, flea markets, antique stores, and they're still usable. So. got one sitting around and you're just not using it all right there we 
cut this in half. It's easier to work with. The whole cabbage plant is edible, so you don't really have to take the stem and stuff off. But all right, now with this cabbage shredder, just drag it across the blades. Show you what that's doing in there. Making like a slaw. Now, to ferment this, you don't add anything to it except for salt. Some people can add caraway seeds um, that add some extra flavoring, but you basically want to smash this get a big pile of this cabbage in there smash it down till the juices cover what cabbage you have and then put more shredded cabbage in smash it down until the juices cover it and then keep going until you fill this leave yourself enough room you can put your plate on and uh you're going to add salt in between layers before you start smashing i'm going to show you that Right now, I add some salt. Now the way I do it is I get a good pile in here, like that, and then I just cover the top of it with salt, like that. Now you'll do that every layer you get like this, and that'll give you the proper amount of salt. I know it sounds like a lot, but it does a whole process through fermentation, and uh, it basically eats that salt, so. Uh, that's how you do it. Uh, af if you're going to add jalapenos or um, maybe some sort of other pepper or you want to put something in your sauerkraut, um, do it when you go to can it. Don't do it during the fermentation part. Okay? Alright, I'll show you some time lapse of uh, smashing this and I'll show you what it looks like at the end. One thing I do want to say about this process is it is not easy. Sometimes you have to push really hard. So get, maybe get a strong kid or something that can sit here and do this for a while. Don't move on till you have enough juice from each layer to cover itself. So it's just now starting to break down. We need to get this pressed out till there's enough juice to cover this cabbage and this takes it's a little process but don't move on until you get to that point notice I'm not like beating it like a hammer I'm pushing and twisting push twist working your way around the outside then down through the middle make sure you're getting all the way to the bottom or as far down as you can go without breaking the bottom push twist push twist Plastic mallet doesn't work as well. Get an old baseball bat or something like this. Okay, can you see this? It's basically covered in its own fluid now. That's what you want to do. Now we're just going to keep doing layer by layer. I'll fill it up about as high as I can get it on this crock and then I'll Smash it down as far as I can go until it's covered with its own liquids And we'll do that until uh, We we're done with this head or until this is just about full uh, I don't think I'm gonna fill this all the way up just because I know what we use But uh, you can stop at any point you want uh, 
I'll get this done and I'll show you what the next steps are. Okay, so the stem part right here, it will ferment, but it's not pleasant to the palate. So take this part out, just use this cabbage. All right, so that's one and a half cabbage. It's about one and three quarter, just over one, maybe one and five eighths of a gallon. This other half of this will go into cabbage steaks. Probably make one of the heads, we have two heads left. Um, we'll probably make one of them into slaw, and we'll probably have some with fried cabbage and maybe even beef and cabbage. But this is all the sauerkraut we're going to make. This would probably have fit in there, but we're just going to keep it for some uh, cabbage steaks. All right, now there's only a few more steps. Uh, I like to pull this away from the edge like this, kind of pump it in the middle because that will be underneath this plate. Make sure all your sides are clear, clean. All right. So it's gonna look something like that, all right? No matter what you do, you're gonna have a few little floaties. Those will come out when you skim it. Every few weeks, you're gonna come and just skim the top of the water, uh, whatever builds up. It'll grow on the, your weight and your plate. But it'll be floating in the water. You just skim it off. All right, now we're going to take our plate. Make sure everything's submerged. We're just going to put a weight on it. All right, now all we have to do is cover this with a towel. I use something porous just so it can breathe and I'll put a rubber band around it to hold it. Alright now once you got a towel on there just pull it tight. Rubber bands on. You let this sit in a cool uh, dark dry fairly dry place and uh, maybe a basement closet uh, you know that sort of thing and check it every couple weeks maybe every two to three weeks about six weeks this should be ready to eat uh, you can leave it knead it right out of the crock or you can take it out and can it after it's done fermenting hope you guys try this this is our late dutch cabbage sauerkraut making video stick around now and we'll show you what we're harvesting right now make sure you hit that subscribe button hit the like button we'll see you guys next time this has been Scrappy Acres Homestead, Northwest Ohio.
Thanks for visiting Scrappy Acres Homestead right here in Northwest, Ohio. We hope you continue to grow your own food and we hope you learn, or at least are inspired by our channel. God bless. See you next time.